I thought I was talking about something else. <laughs> so I'm talking about streaming, and I guess all of you know what streaming is. And uh, pretty much streaming is sort of what Emily was mentioning. Either you're going to think it's going to save library, or it's going to be the bane of our existence. Uh, the reason why is because streaming, the cost per use model varies greatly among each service. Now, at certain libraries, we began investigating st uh, streaming before I even got involved with this. We studied Hoopla, and then around April, we started looking at every streaming service possible, um, mainly because I just wanted to investigate everything. Uh, I, I share an office, and I work for Jennifer, who's great, and Amy's here as well. She's the head of collection services there. And so every library has different ways of deciding what type of service or platform you're going to get. Some people, it's going to be your end. Some people, you just get the decision from high above, that's it. You're in a consortium, so you get whatever you can get. Or you have a team. And at Surrey Library, we have a very involved process. It's good because we really put any service through an incredible amount of work to see if this is what we want to do. And after that, it goes to the city of Surrey, which puts it through a privacy impact assessment. After that, they put it through another assessment. <laughs> it is called an ISRA. We'll get into the acronym. I haven't listed them. I'm not going to get into that. So, why would you want a streaming service? One is that it is something that we're trying to get for libraries to compete. Let's be blunt with that. Okay? We're trying to get millennials. We're trying to get more use out of our services. And with Mary, at what Mary Morgan was saying, it is the future. Let's be blunt. It is where we're at. Digital services, streaming is where we're going. You know, whether you like it or not, that's where we're going. So, what's out there? There's Canopy. Some of you might have already have can Canopy. Mm -hmm. Some of you might be investigating Canopy. Canopy started, strangely enough, in Australia to migrate to Albert. There's Medici TV that currently Vancouver Public Library has. Um, after investigating it, you know, it's, I love it, but I'm not here to tell you which to get. I love Medici. Just the interface is incredible. It's incredible. Uh, there's Access Video On Demand, Avon, which is very interesting. It's other info base. Um, it, it's it's it, they split up their content where you have children, you have classic movies, but you have the whole shebang for a large amount of money. We're looking at just the separate children's service and the classic film. We get so much. Cheaper. So uh, there's IndieFlix. It's IndieFlix, okay. Um, yeah, it's IndieFlix. That that's what really made us hesitant about even exploring Acorn TV because it's out of RV Digital. We asked for a trial version. We asked for a trial version. We didn't get the trial working for Acorn. Uh, so. Every one of these streaming services has its benefits and its pitfalls. Uh, something like Canopy TV, I'm sorry, Canopy, is mainly videos, uh, sorry, mainly movies. 60% uh, documentaries, 40%, I would call it mainstream films. It's more sort of, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 I wouldn't call it back to IndieFlix, no. It's better than IndieFlix. But you know, yeah, it's 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 yeah. <laughs> like I said, Medici TV is performing arts. It's opera. It's something that I, I can gush about. The <laughs> access, like I mentioned, access video on demand. There's also Hoopla. Still Hoopla, still kicking around. Still kicking around. Um, Hoopla, as you you may know, began as digital downloadable music. Back when we were all trying to get onto the downloadable music bandwagon, there was Hoopla, there was Freegal. Freegal was way gone. Um, Hoopla. 
<laughs> okay, still kicking around. Okay. In some places, Regal still is. Uh, so hoopla, hoopla, yeah, hoopla. Um, I was public service manager at Prince George when we were trying to get hoopla. I said no. Everybody said yes. We got hoopla. Um, yeah. Uh, hoopla is. The cost per use model for Hoopla is, is, is very high, and that's the reason why, you know, Hoopla is 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 being used less and less in public libraries uh, because of the cost per use model. And that's what um, Canopy. We're, you know, we're, we're we really are trying to look at Canopy um, through more of an objective lens because of the cost per use model. Um, Canopy is something that's really growing really fast. A lot of library systems are now getting it. Portland has it. Uh, I know um, uh, Timberland Regional Library System, which I used to be part of, also has it. Um, but that's in Washington State. And um, I know that we're we're going to go and try to pursue Canopy ourselves at Surrey Libraries. Um, but it has to go through a privacy impact assessment. Um, Acorn TV, like I said, it is different from Canopy because, as Emily mentioned, it is just TV shows. It is British TV. So that is an issue that Canopy, the uh, Dylan, who's the vendor for Canopy, was, he loved touting that, hey, we're different than Acorn TV but guess, because we only have movies. So your Patrons won't be trapped using up all their tokens watching all these TV shows. That's something that is a concern and about Acorn TV that you have to keep in mind. Uh, right now, VPL has Acorn TV. Anybody can use it right now in a trial version. Just, just say it. I'm not giving a plug to VPL, but if you want to go check out, at least you can check out that trial. We couldn't get the trial for Surrey Law. We're paying for the trial. Okay, I'll pay you know. <laughs> Nothing for free with RV Digital, that's for sure. Um, so, I'll give you a sort of uh, background to our ringer process that we do, do at Surrey Libraries. So, what we do is that first, how do we decide on a streaming service? We get input from the public, we get input from staff, we get input from all of you here at the co-op. We really rely on all of you. The communication here at the co-op is great. We get a lot of feedback. We get, you know, we ask, we pick up the phone, ask what's, you know, how's Ecorn doing? How's Canopy doing? That sort of thing, right? From there, we then contact the vendor and try to get a trial. Uh, we have a digital services group at uh, Surrey Libraries. It's, the, it's people that pretty much are interested in digital services. Um, and we then look at it, look at if it fits within our strategic initiatives, our strategic plan, we have a matrix. And from there, we expand our trial to multiple information staff, we get back feedback. From there, we look at it again and we decide whether or not we want to send it to the city of Surrey for our privacy impact assessment. And there we wait months and months and months. Yeah. <laughs> uh, finally, when they say, yes, you're okay, but you have to do this and this and this, we can still say no. We did that with Hoopla. Um, we went through everything. At the end of the day, it just didn't make any sense. Uh, so. You know, what I'd like to conclude with, because I know I only have two to three minutes, I think I'm up to the third minute, <laughs> that basically with any streaming service that you're looking at, you don't have to rush into it. You can not take your time, because it is, we're using the public's money at the end of the day. Um, you have to look at it carefully. You have to look at the difference between entertainment, education, or we are we going to just use it to increase stats? Are we going to use it to inform the public? What are we looking at? And it's not an easy decision. And it's a lot of money we, we're talking about whenever we get any sort of streaming service. Especially since people love 
that without a doubt people love streaming services, they love Hoopla, they love freedom when it came to digital downloadable music. It's just it was loved too much. <laughs> it cost too much. We have to be responsible, we have to be really educated and really look at these services. And that's what I like to do. Thanks, Shane. Uh, so I just want to talk briefly here before our break, so I won't spend too much time on it, but I did want to talk about the, um, the grant we received from the Francophone Affairs Program in BC that was in partnership with the Libraries Branch. Um, that uh, We got uh, $21,500 for purchasing French content. Um, this uh, focuses for our small and medium-sized libraries who need uh, French content in their collections. Um, and so we chose, um, because library to go is our shared collection platform for the province, that's the platform that we chose to say that where we were going to purchase content to make that e-content available. Uh, so we're looking at uh, purchasing e-book and e-audiobook content. Um, 50% of what we purchase must be original French content and not translations, and we uh, will spend this money by December 2019. Uh, so a little bit of stats about you know how many folks in the province will get this. So our, the remaining library to go libraries um, in the collection service close to about a million people in service population. Um, and we have a very strong selections team for library to go who create the collection in general. Um, and so we've reached out to that community and we have three volunteers who have a uh, knowledge of French speaking um, across the province, somebody from Caribou, Fort Nelson, and uh, North Van District who will be doing our French content selecting. Um, we will be following our same guidelines as much as we can based on what's available within the Overdrive Marketplace. Um, looking at a break of about 30% e-audio, 70% uh, um, e-books, though we may need to adjust that depending on what selection is available for French audiobooks within library to go um, and looking at our general breakdown between fiction and non-fiction and adult and children's and young um, adult. So we're looking at, uh, I think approximately, we'll see what we end up with, but about three, 300 e-books and 120 audiobooks that will be new to the collection. Um, all we can do is go upwards because we have almost no French language material currently in the Library to Go collection, so this will be a really great um, resource to build this part of the collection for our small and medium-sized libraries, many of them who, at least in the ebook world, don't uh, provide access currently through Overdrive to any French content. Uh, we're also working as much as we can with Overdrive uh, for their help in at least uh, building carts for us in um, helping us identify French Canadian content versus non-French Canadian or non non-French Canadian French content, um, original content versus translation, some of those things Overdrive can help us um, when we're doing our selection. Uh, and so that, that's my update on that. Thank you.